Hello everyone. In our previous tutorial of Hacker's 2D model part 1, we have discussed about how to set up a basic Hacker's 2D model. Now in this tutorial, we are going to discuss about different options of Hacker's and how to analyze the result. So in this RustMapper window, we can go to tools, then go to add web imagery. Then from this option, we can add different kinds of map here. So suppose we are looking to add Google map. So we will click on Google map, then we'll click on OK. So here the Google map has been added here. To make it more visible, we can right click on image one, then go to image display properties and make it transparent then click on OK. So here we can see that our Google map is visible clearly. From this portion, we can also say that our projection system of this model was correct as the Google map and our terrain file overlap with each other. This option is uh, sometimes necessary uh, because we have to uh, identify different kinds of uh, station locations or we have to um, identify different doors, culverts or any kind of structures. So adding Google map or other web imagery is very necessary for our result analysis. We can also see the Google map in geometric window. So if we go to the geometric window, here we can see that it is not visible now, but if we click on this select layers to view in background option, then we can click on Google map and also unmark the image one and again mark the image one option and then click on close. So here it is. So in uh, the geometric window, adding Google map or other kind of map is sometimes necessary to uh, draw different kind of structures um, in this study area or for other options as well. So after that, we will discuss about how we can add different shape files or other necessary files. So for that, we can go to tools, then we can click on add map layers option to add different shape files or other files in this Rust mapper. Now, if we go in the geometric data window and select the mesh, then click on view view options we can fill the mesh by solid fill by tick mark on this option and if we unmark the option then it will be transparent like this now if we want to do some result analysis we can click on this depth word and tick the option so that we can see the depth here. Uh, now I will untick the Google map to see the terrain. If we click on the velocity word and then tick mark on velocity, then we will see the velocity. So for that, we will unmark the depth option. If we click on max option, we will see max velocity. If we click on minimum option, we will see minimum velocity. We can also see the max depth or minimum depth. Like we can see also maximum water surface elevation and minimum water surface elevation. Now, we can also see particle tracing and velocity arrows here. Suppose we have started the animation and click on the velocity arrows. So here we can see that there are some arrows which is indicating the water flow direction. We can also see 
some particle tracing. So if we unmark the static velocity arrows and click on particle tracing, then we will be able to see the particle tracing. We can go to the velocity settings option and uh, increase the speed of particle tracing, the density, width, lifetime, etc. So here it is more visible. We can also uh, change the option of static arrows from here. So uh, these options can be very handy sometimes. Now we can draw some profile lines in our terrain. So for that, we will select profile lines, then we'll click on this plus sign and we can draw the profile line here. We will uh, click on left mouse button, then we'll double click here after drawing this. Then we can uh, see that there is line length slope, etc. Then we can save it by clicking on save option. We can give a name. Suppose we are giving one, two, three, four, five, then okay. So here it is, it is saved here. We can also delete it. If we select it, we, we can see that there are some number here. Uh, basically there is an option here. Uh, suppose we have draw the line from left to right. But if we draw the line from right bank to left bank and save it, suppose giving the name four, five, six, seven, then okay. So here from left bank to right bank in the first line, it is uh, numbered as zero, five, two, two, zero, one, zero, four, four, zero, one, five, six, six, zero. But in line four, five, six, seven, the zero is in right bank and in the left bank, the, there is the maximum number. So we should remember this for result analysis. We can delete uh, simply by selecting it and then selecting the cross mark, then selecting yes. Now, suppose uh, we have selected the depth option here, then if we place the mouse uh, here, we can see different values of depth. Then if we make the velocity active, then if we place the velocity options, we can see the velocity values here. And if we make the terrain level active, then we can see the DEM elevation here. Suppose we have drawn a profile line here and saved it like previous one, two, three, four, five, okay. Then, we can go to the profile line and select a point over the line, then right click on it, go to the plot time series, then depth. Here we will be able to see different plot and table value. So here we can see the different value of depth in different date. Sometimes the plot is not seen here, uh, but we can see the table here very clearly. We can also select any other point, like if we uh, click the mouse right button here, then plot time series, then depth. We can see the depth of water at that particular location for different dates. 
So now, if we want to uh, analyze another result, like if we go to tools, manage results map, and then go to add new map, we can export different layers from this option. Suppose we have to take maximum depth. So for that, we will select depth, then tick mark on the max option, then we'll tick mark on raster based on terrain, then we'll click on add map. So here is uh, a depth max layer is added. So now we can go to this depth max, then click right uh, left click on this option then right click on it and then compute or update stored map if we click on it then it will be exported so where it is exported to see that we can go to our project file then in plan one here it is seen that the depth file is exported here we can check the properties that it is just created now. So it is an it is a very handy option for result analysis. If we export uh, these layers, then we can analyze different results by taking the layers in ArcGIS. There is also a, a option an option here that we can measure length by clicking this option and then by left click here and left click here then double click so here is the line length and slope so basically uh, here are some methods uh, which we have discussed discussed in this tutorial so thank you everyone see you in next tutorial